Waka waka waka, what's up, and welcome back to the channel for yet another FC Finch Transformers review. And uh, like I said, we're gonna be doing a couple of classic rewinds here while we wait for new products. So, what better than to go through a classic Takara binge and do some Iron Hide? That's right, we're gonna take a look at MP27, the Transformers masterpiece version of Iron Hide. And uh, yeah, there it is right before us. It is packaged in the uh, Nissan Cherry Vanette mode. And uh, real quick, the reason we're kind of looking at at this is uh i don't know if any of you have been following a lot of the conventions um i'm not sure if it was at singapore or one of the other bot cons uh but somebody going past the x trans bots exhibits uh they did spot uh early not really prototypes but early kind of testing for an iron hide and a ratchet so of course we know how the whole x trans bots things work uh whenever x trans bots does something uh fans toys is very likely to follow so uh, i have a feeling that we're probably going to be expecting some third party uh masterpiece entries into these two characters in probably the next uh you know two to five years two being optimistic five being you know kind of realistic but either way so i figured is what better time to take a look at where we all started so of course that does mean taking a look at his box and we're just going to kind of move the vehicle off to the side and get a quick look and of course uh takara don't pull no punches they just use all straight product shots so of course we got iron hide looking all iron hide like right there and then of course he's in his nissan Cherry Vanette. Well, he is a Nissan a Cherry Vanette. And he's got Transformers Masterpiece along the top. He is Ironhide. And then there's a whole bunch of language I cannot read right there. On the side, he got Ironhide giving his little screaming thing. He's got his little fist of fury firing off. And of course, he is a Transformers Masterpiece made by Takara Tommy. His name is Ironhide. He's a Cybertronian security officer. On the top, it's upside down. Not anymore. It's Transformers Ironhide. And then on the side, it's upside down again. You got the Nissan Cherry Vanette looking very good there uh transformers mastery spy takara tommy and then on the back of course you have all the things he does all his little accessories a bunch of stuff in a language i cannot read you have of course the older school of uh mp10 and i forget what mp Bumpy, what this was and then of course you got a whole list of his accessories right there and that's pretty much it for the box let's get a quick look at his instructions and of course in the typical takara tommy style you got those orthographic shots of of the toy right there and they got all his little uh weaponry everything that he has he has liquid shooters he has utility sensors he has static gun lasers and laser pistols because that's what iron hide does and of course you can see he got all his little uh stats right there of course he gets a 10 for courage and on the back you get all of his instructions which uh look i guess informative kind of as long as you can uh just if unless you can read the language which i cannot so i just kind of look at the pictures like i do with most books anyway so because i can't read and uh, there we go for that and lastly but not leastly we of course have his collector's card right there and you can see you got the product shots on there you got the set 10 for courage no i know that's courage because it says so in the instructions uh you got his uh bio here which is of course in a language i can't read and then of course on the front you have wow a very nice animation of ironhide mp27 getting all ready to boogie against some deceptive creeps he got his little van lights lighting up i really do like that and that is it for all his opening material and let's get a good look at the old battle wagon and uh yeah this fan mode just looks uh pretty incredible again it's, it's fully painted on the outside it looks really really good nice glossy paint uh, that i really love takara for again this is this is this is why i feel you know makes a good masterpiece that nice glossy paint that's what i live for i love this period correct decaling alongside just goes from the yellow to the orange to the kind of diarrhea brown <laughs> Oh, uh, he's got plastic four tires, and uh, the wheels are painted in nice silver. They look very industrial. He will roll extremely nicely. Uh, he does, of course, have some nice silver over the license plate, nice black over the, uh, that's for the windshield wiper. A nice transparent plastic for the lights. Looks really good. Kind of hard to see the red in there, but does look really, really good. Again, chrome plastic for the bumper. Got the little exhaust tip right there. And uh, blue transparent plastic for the windows. Looks really, really good. Kind of tries to hide the robot drunk as best as possible you can't see the red in this light which is really cool got the nice paint along the top got a little bit of gunmetal right here along the roof line nice and flat again same thing for the other side and then of course uh plastic chrome plastic on the front bumper and for the headlights got painted running lights at the bottom then the autobot logo right there uh windshield wipers are done in black and uh, the roller mode pretty much hides away for the most i can see his pelvis down here but that really does it. it's pretty easily hidden of course 
course. And he does sport a few accessories that we can start with here because he can carry them in robot mode. So the first thing he starts with is, of course, his laser pistols. They're painted in a nice silver. These are, of course, the guns that he was wielding in the movie. They're very nicely detailed. Got a little bit of fluting right here along the barrel. Looking really, really good. And, of course, if you want to store these on the vehicle mode, you got a little top mount right here and uh that will look as ridiculous as ever oh but of course if you want to make it look not ridiculous you can of course store it in the bottom of the vehicle that's right these store right along in the bottom you just put it right in the uh bottom right here they do snap in very well same thing for the other gun and we can snap that in right there and uh, he will still roll just fine and lastly you do have his little rifle here it is done in a nice chrome plastic uh, looks good i can't remember when he used this but i know he did for a while and then of course got a little uh, gray plastic handle and then of course we'll tap in right along the top right there oh there it goes and of course yeah that will still look as ridiculous as uh, as they always do but it is what it is and uh yeah and real quick before we move on let's do some comparisons before we get them transformed up and we're going to bring in our typical comparison we're going to be an mp18 streak the only one that is transformed in uh alt mode and uh yeah this looks kind of okay if anything streak looks a little big but we know that these transformers don't really scale in vehicle mode so uh but made by the same manufacturer you expect they look kind of close and I think they do. So, uh, yeah, this overall works out pretty well. And uh, I think that that is about it for vehicle mode. All right, so let's get Mr. Ironhide transforming up into his robot mode. And this is an overall pretty fun and enjoyable transformation, uh, especially considering the masterpiece level. So let's get it started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take his wheels. We're just going to, they're on this like double hinge system. You're just going to kind of bring it in like this. So that you kind of curve it. Just kind of use all the space. You're going to curve it on this hinge right here. And you're just going to kind of bring it in just like this and tuck it in the leg. Same thing with this. I bring it out, uh, tuck it in on this hinge. It's a bit tight. Um, it just kind of snaps in, and then you just bring it in just like this, and you'll fold it in just like that. Next up, what we can do is we can kind of pop out the, uh, we can kind of open up, pull up his front end, and you'll see he's got these tabs right here, and you just kind of pull these out, give us some space to work. And next, what we can do is we can just untab, and everything just comes untabbed very easy. So he's got tab slots all along the sides of the vehicle, and you can just kind of start bringing the legs down just a little bit um because what we're going to do next is uh we're going to kind of start working on his legs so first off let's move up let's pull this panel down when we're doing that we can pull this over and you're going to want to use this double hinge system to kind of fold over the panel just like this it's going to kind of cover it. it'll snap in place just like that and uh, then oh, just want to make sure this stays out and then you can come out here and it'll kind of snap past this point right here and kind of fold down just like that it's going to be the same thing on this side i'll do it off camera so now that we got that done you can see we're just like this and we're just going to split the legs and they're just tabbed in right at the bottom here that tab is strong enough to hold them in just like that and then you can kind of take up the rear bumper just kind of fold it up just like that and then what you want to do is you want to take the toe and just kind of fold it inward and turn it all the way around just like this and then you can just turn his knee all the way around just like that to kind of get that on the outside and it's going to be the same thing for this side i will do that off camera and one thing I did forget to mention is you make sure you want to pull this out just like this and then spin it around. That'll kind of free everything up just in case you're having trouble there. So there we go for that. So now we got something like this going on. We got the legs mostly done. First, we can uh, pull out the front end of the van and just kind of pull it out just like this. And we can kind of leave it out just like that. You can pull this down like this for the time being. And then what we want to do next is we can start kind of bringing this up just a little bit. And while we're doing that, we can kind of bring the back end down. The back end operates on this hinge system. So you have a hinge right here, a hinge here, and then a hinge right here. And you can kind of bring that back. You just want to kind of cut it all the way back so it's sitting just like this. And then what we want to do is 
You can kind of bring this up, pull the front end forward just like that, and we can rotate these on this hinge just like this. And as we're doing that, we can rotate the arms on this hinge right here, and it's gonna tab in right along here, just like this. And then you can bring the arms all the way up. Same thing for the other arm. So again, bring it out on this hinge right here, and then you're gonna bring the arm out on this hinge right here, and then you could bring it like just like this and leave this front end out and now you can bring this down on this hinge right here and you're just going to kind of consume all of this with the back half of the van just kind of bring let's fold the front end down a little bit give ourselves some more space to work fold it down a bit more just like this and you should have everything like that push this forward just like this and now we can bring up the front end of the van and uh, it's gonna lock in right over here now we'll really lock it it'll just kind of set itself up just like that so now we have basically the torso done and i'm gonna lift up the camera before we continue so we kind of got this going on and real quick one thing i forgot to mention is you have these two locks right here and they're gonna go in in right over here so we're going to bring this forward as much as possible and bring down this this is just going to lock his shoulders in place want to get it snap in there same thing for the other side get it and it'll uh kind of get arrange this and it will get in place right there and that will kind of lock everything in place and now what you can do is you kind of make sure these are all the way out you want to rotate them on the side just like this same thing for the other side rotate that as well we can bring down the legs all the way so his legs are fully staying and then you can push these in on either side and now you got a tab right here it's going to go into the slot right here so you're going to turn the wheel in and that's just going to kind of lock in though he's got a little hub butt <laughs> wheel hub butt and uh, there you go and that will lock in his waist and now what we can do to finish off is you can rotate the arms upward just like this and we can bring them down just like this oh and again these these like to come untapped you're gonna see that many times during the video but it is what it is and now we are almost done so what we can do is we kind of open this up it's on this hinge right here and you can kind of bring the arm down just kind of situate the elbow and what we can do is we can unravel the hand bring that out like this Bring, close this up on this hinge right here. And now you got the ta this tab right here. It's going to go into this tab right here. And that will be one arm fully done. Same thing with the other side. So we're going to open up this panel right here. You're going to bring the elbow down. This is going to kind of snap. And you can kind of fold this in. And then you kind of fold out the hand. You got the slot right here. It's going to go to the tab right here. Just like that. And... Hold on, let me get it situated like magic. There we have Ironhide MP27 in his robot mode. All right, so let's take a good look at Ironhide in robot mode. And uh, for the most part, uh, this does look pretty good. Uh, again, you got the face done in a nice gray paint here. The rest of the helmet done in a nice red. That's some really nice blue for the eyes. I love the face of it. The really nice natural frown on there. Just that old man kind of frown. Uh, again, transparent is basically at the front of the vehicle. Got the transparent plastic on the chest. And the nice chrome uh, kind of gives that more premium look. Uh, Autobot symbol is right there on the belly. And the uh, thing I like is that, you know, you got the paint here on the shoulders. Some companies may leave this plastic, uh, but uh, th this is done in a very nice, you can see it's got that kind of uh, nice paint on there. Feels really good. The plastic feels really good to the touch, in my opinion. You got the paint on the arms. I uh, got the paint on the torso. Uh, you have the paint on the pelvic area. Looks really nice. Same thing with the thighs. You got that paint right there. And then, of course, the legs painted very nice. And a nice glossy red. Looks really good. It really pops. And then with the arm, we'll get to this. Um, and then, of course, the arms as well and painted on the sides he's, he's kind of got some uh robot junk but i don't think it looks terrible i think it kind of looks just interesting because a few more uh, angles and edges and then of course here's one of my gripes with this uh you can see he's pretty much hollow right in the lower belly i'm uh, uh, that is one of the things that's what turned me off from buying the masterpiece trailbreaker uh just that gap in there it feels like it just is unloved feels kind of like they kind of just left something out uh also the uh it doesn't have all that much heft it feels like it is mostly plastic i'm not sure if there's any die cast in this at all um but nevertheless and if you turn them around to the back um you can see uh, again painted on the back he actually does really clean up on the back i uh, got a few screw holes but doesn't look terrible uh he's got the wheel butt right back here uh again i, I don't mind this too much it kind of gives it that more transforming feel it gives it that robotic feel so i'm okay with that uh legs are a bit you know they might be uh untidy to some but i actually don't mind this i think this kind of again gives them a more mechanical feel um so there we go yeah really clean from the back 
Let's move on to his articulation. Some parts are moving by themselves. And he's got the head on a ball joint. It moves side to side really smoothly. You can look up that much. And you can kind of use this joint to make it look down a whole ton. Uh, his arms, they're on a ratchet at the shoulder. You do got to kind of bring it out to go all the way around. You can't see the ratchet in there. And then, of course, you can bring it up all the way up. A nice clickety clackety ratchet look. And then sometimes the hinge will come undone. That is annoying. Um, and then his bicep, at least on my copy, is a very tight to the turn. Uh, also, this uh, elbow joint is on a base pin. Um, it will be very loose for some strange reason, but he does get you a full 90 when it does hold. It holds just fine on this side. Uh, next up, he does give you a wrist swivel and of course you have to get under his fingers this is pretty how he has uh, all his four fingers on a base hinge at the knuckle moving out his arms he does have a waist swivel you can get his legs out for a nice fusion kick a little bit of a bet a little bit of a break his uh, knee there too um and of course he does have the hinge moving up at the uh waist panel here and then doesn't really get out to the side because of these side panels and uh to the back uh again doesn't get you too much to the back he does have a knee swivel he does have a thigh swivel and uh, he does have a 90 degree, uh, uh, just under 90 at the knee. And then, of course, he can get you a rocker on an ankle tilt. And then, of course, he gets you a toe tilt down and a little bit of a heel tilt back. And that is about it for the articulation. And we're going to move on to his accessories. And we're going to spend a lot of time here because he does come with a few of those. So let's get back to what we already covered, which are his uh, two little uh, pistol guns. And, of course, you can see they got the little tab right there on the handle. And and, of course, he does have the nice long tab right here in the hand. This can be kind of a pain because the thumb is static. But what you want to do, ah, I'm throwing the guns at myself. Uh, what you want to do is you want to kind of put the gun in at an angle like this and then just kind of push it in. And then you can close the fingers around it and it'll hold that nice and firmly. And we're just going to kind of use this hand because this is being useless right now. Uh, we're just going to kind of move this up and we can pull this gun out. He can also hold his shiny rifle because of course he should be able to dual wield and you can just again put that in very similarly just kind of put it in at an angle except it's there we go there we go and he will hold that just fine, and he'll be able to fire with that rifle just as well. And he'll be able to dual wield a gun and a rifle in both hands if this decides to stay up. And there we go for his gun. And next up, he does come with uh, several hand attachments. So uh, the first one uh, being his little uh, firing fingers, or the fingers with little barrels on them. And of course, it is fully painted in that gun metal. And you got the little hinges. They're, they're just faux hinges. It doesn't articulate at all, but for his little uh, finger joints. And how you put this on this is pretty typical for all these attachments you're going to open up the uh, forearm right here just open it all the way up make sure the hand is in a fist you're going to fold the fist back in just like you're transforming them back into van mode and then you can just tab it right back in here and you'll notice he has this little uh slot or this little tab right here and you're just going to put the little hand piece right on there and uh, there you go he can fire his fingers and let's real quick untransform the other one because we have a couple more to uh show off off real quick here so again just open this up fold it back in like your chance for him and then fold this in oh oh just like that um and you have of course his little uh it, they call this a liquid nitrogen launcher. I don't know, it looks like a dustbuster nose. Uh, but of course, that is painted in gun metal as well. Uh, got that very nice dark crisp feel. And of course, that will just tab right in uh, to the other hand just like that. And he could, uh, you know, fire. He's got the fire and the ice, baby. Um, and lastly, but not least, he's got this little red cannon attachment right here. It is painted, of course, in the similar red to the body. And that, of course, has a slot and that will take off his little finger cannon. They are a quite firm attachment, uh, so no worries about them falling off, and uh, you can just plug that right in there, and so again, uh, you can basically give him a whole ton of options with what you want him to have on his hands, and that is just pretty cool. So that's everything you could put on his hands and uh, <laughs> you think we're done. Um, but no, he does come with quite a lot of uh, back attachments. Uh, so the first of which being his cannon. Uh, this is from More Than Meets the Eye when he goes and tries to shoot Megatron. He's all tired of uh, being beaten by the Decepticons. Of course, it's done in a very nice chrome plastic. Looks really good. And of course, does articulate at two hinges. Hinges right here, hinges right here. And uh, the missile, it doesn't fire, but it can just fit in there 
there like so, but it does come out. So you may look like he has launched already. There is no launching mechanism. It just sits there and looks pretty. And uh, that just attaches to a peg slot on the back. So you can have them kind of... Oh, let's raise the camera just a bit so you can have him kind of trying to shoot Megatron with his little back cannon here. And, of course, if you don't want to utilize this accessory, you can, of course, give him his... Uh rocket pack and that is of course painted in a nice silver paint got the nice flutes right on here it looks really really good and you notice that also has a peg so i got a little detail right here too which is cool because you'll never really see this and uh you can of course just plug that into the back as well and that fits on nice and firmly as these two little side things that kind of keep it in place and uh also it does come with these uh nice little uh, launch effects. Uh, they're done in a very nice orange uh, plastic. Looks really, really good. Love the little white base here and uh, you can just attach those to the bottom of the booster ports here. They fit in nice and firmly and you can kind of make up like he's flying off. I guess the only downside to this is uh, as far as I know, I don't see anything in the instructions about being able to give him a flight stand at all or put him on a flight stand. He doesn't come with an adapter for a flight stand which is kind of a shame because he's supposed to be flying when he has the rocket pack on and you can't really make him fly so uh that is unfortunate and we're not this is actually going to be kind of with accessories mixed in with gimmicks so he does come with his little uh wrist radar dish and of course that is painted in a nice silver again some very nice detailing on the back of the dish here too and you can see it's got this little peg right here i mean uh i suppose you can insert it into his back if you want but uh it is meant to be inserted right here in this uh port on the wrist and uh he can actually just kind of see through rocks and whatnot like he did in one of the earlier episode and hey he's got to see through some rocks right um that's why he comes with this little uh cardboard chest insert and that kind of just shows you know little outline again i think it's from one of the first uh few episodes and what you do here is just kind of open up his chest plate this goes in just like this and you just kind of want to insert it like so uh like so it's just like that and uh, then you just bring it back up and uh yeah he can scan and uh, have uh some information on his chest which is pretty cool uh does kind of differentiate him and give him a little uh, little bit of that cartoon pizzazz and lastly but not leastly he does come with one alternate face and of course it is his face uh, the, the the kind of like the movie face i've been shot again the face is really nicely detailed painted in that nice gray uh got the blue eyes and how you change this out is uh you just kind of pull from the front you notice you got a slot connection up here and a little uh port right here you notice the back of the face has a little circular uh has a little slot and a little uh circular uh port and you just plug this new face oh it's going in upside down that can't be good and you just plug this in right here and uh yeah now he's got that angry face like oh, i don't like what i find or whatever you want to do with that and of course uh just wait there is more uh let's bring the camera down a little bit because you've got all these accessories right and you don't have any place to store them well takara has kind of uh got you covered there he does come with this nice little tray right here and uh, you can just see we'll take out his we'll take off his little uh radar dish you can just see that you can really store everything on here everything has a nice place except for the alternate face i'm not sure if that has a spot to store on here but everything does store on here and uh this kind of resembles uh the little g1 toy uh, where you know part they, they half the van came off it kind of parts formed and it uh, turned into a little uh battle stand so uh, that's kind of what this does it's kind of what's paying homage to so uh that is pretty neat and a cool way to store all your accessories if you don't uh store them in the box like me and uh believe it or not we are finally done with his accessories Woo! and for just a few comparisons let's get in with the uh big boss spot mp44 of course mp44 came out after masterpiece ironhide so you can see how that looks and of course mp44 is posed but he does still kind of tower over ironhide which is as he should and then of course we got mp39 sunstreaker right over there so you can see how he looks with a standard takara carbot and let's bring in fans toys uh rig or their aka their huffer so you can see how he looks with a uh fans toys mini bot and uh yeah overall i mean i think he fits right in with the gang has those nice proportions uh so there we go for just a quick comparison 
So let's summarize. And there we have it for our classic rewind review of Transformers Masterpiece MP27 Ironhide. And uh, let's start with this figure has a lot of strength. So uh, it's painted really nicely. Uh, got some great articulation. Uh, it overall presents very well in robot mode. Got all the screws hidden in back. Everything you'd expect. The transformation's fun and enjoyable. And the vehicle mode is really good. Uh, that being said, uh, again, the glaring issues. It's got that whole in the lower abdominal area and of course these side panels on the hips that just unfortunately limit articulation and just really don't look all that good uh, also on my copy i do have that loose elbow hinge i'm not going to ding the figure for that but i'm just going to restate it uh that you know that could be just a my copy thing and i fully understand that uh so again uh we do a few options for this figure coming up from a few different third-party companies so it's up to you if you want something to kind of uh, look the part in your collection or if you want to wait on on something else. Uh, me personally, uh, again, I probably am going to be trading this guy out for a better option should one arise in the next couple of years here. Uh, but that being said, uh, I really can't recommend a place to buy this guy because he's been out of stock at most stores for some time. So just keep your eyes to the interwebs or the social media pages. He goes up for sale pretty often for most people looking to move a collection. So definitely keep your eye on it. It's usually pretty reasonable in the $130 range. Of course, you could always do the KO as well if uh, that is a bit out of your price budget. And that being said, that is going to to conclude this review so if you found it fun and enjoyable consider hitting the like button down below also if you are not yet subscribed i do highly recommend you consider subscribing to me i do do transformers pretty regularly uh third party and both official alike so we do got a third party one coming up uh probably in early february because that's when i get back from my vacation and that being said i have been fc finch that will conclude tonight's program thank you so much for watching good night